So what I have here is an albino Burmese python, of course, and this girl here really saved my butt this week. And in particular, Brian from JTK Reptiles did because I needed a pretty sizable tame snake so I could take around and introduce people to how awesome these reptiles are. And I kind of didn't have one. And he stepped up and I was able to run around with Trisha here and really show people how amazing they are. And you guys know that I had a beautiful albino Burmese named Sunshine and she reminds me of her so much the same kind of temperament certainly a beautiful snake and i can tell you what over the last six or seven days this snake has caused so many people just is truly fall in love with reptiles so i tell you that's why i'm here going to show off some amazing animals at jtk reptiles This is actually Baba, the black-throated monitor. These are one of the largest monitor lizards from Africa. And Bubba is really cool. You can see it's super tame. But at the same time, when you have a lizard that's this size and it kind of wants to do its own thing, it'll do its own thing. And trust me, you know, although it has an extremely powerful jaw, you don't want to get bit by something like this. That tail is what I worry about more than anything. They use this tail as a defense and they can whip it really hard. And I've been whacked by big monitor lizards in the chest where it's literally knocked me off my feet, knocked me to the ground. So I tell you, I don't want to do it. But Bubba here, you can see, is completely docile. And that's one of the reasons I really love black-throated monitors is oftentimes they've got one of the best temperament of, of all the large monitor lizards. That is one cool, cool lizard. Okay, I tell you what, for the people that are thinking snakes are kind of weird, this snake always catches people's attention. This happens to be a cow reticulated python. Kevin McCurley over at Nerd produced it a handful of years back. It's actually a combination between a genetic strike and a phantom. When bred together, you pop these guys out. Now what's interesting is when they're babies, they're typically just pure white. And as they start to grow, they start to get these crazy black markings and different color markings. And that's why Kevin called them a cow, because he thought they looked a little bit like a Holstein cow. Now the thing that's interesting about these guys is a lot of times they seem to be really tame. Sometimes there is a little bit of temperament that's attached to genetic mutations. In the case of the cow, they typically seem to be really docile animals, which makes them a great ambassador to people. So not only are they a stunning looking animal, but they're also a great handling animal. And again, they're varying as they get older. Some have 10% spot. Some will have 90 or 95% spot with just blotching of white. So these are really incredible animals and to me they're the coolest retic out there <laughs> what's up man what's up bud this is a little Solomon Island prehensile tail skink. It's a Carusha zebrata. These things are really unique animals. And again, they're only really native to a very small group of islands. And for a while, they weren't being exported at all and thought they were actually potentially even extinct in the wild. And then they found a new island strand that still had these animals available. One of the reasons why they can be so threatened is the fact that the reproduction is extremely slow. These animals take a while to get to size and then will only have one possibly two babies if they're twins, but typically only one baby. But they just move so incredibly bizarre. And of course, through deforestation and over collection, it's really put a lot of pressure on the wild population. Again, their namesake is this prehensile tail, hence prehensile tail skink. And they're just so incredibly bizarre. But I tell you what, you get two males of these together and they will rip each other apart. So even though they look super, super cute, they are definitely little feisty monkeys. And I can tell you right now from experience, they have really, really sharp claws so that they can climb really well. Right now, he's just digging into my arm, but he's just trying to hang on like I'm some kind of a tree. Karusha Zebrata. That's a cool animal. These guys are one of the most coolest snakes on the planet, of course, especially with that iridescence. Of course, this is what they would call a Dielbert or a white-lipped python. And again, for whatever reason, just that sheen on them, they're like a little bit of a rainbow snake. And of course, they have those black heads and that white lip, and that's their namesake. Now, there's actually a black Dielbert python as well that doesn't have this brown or coppery look. 
and it's just solid black and it gets much larger. These guys I used to work with when I was like 18 or 19 euros and produce these guys, but as babies, number one, they don't have this iridescent look to them and they're very difficult to get to eat. It used to take us six or eight months of assist feeding before they would finally eat. But I tell you what, I wish I would have never got rid of my group because they are truly amazing animals and it's something that's on my lookout. And I tell you what, you gotta be careful because these guys are definitely face biters. As a matter of fact, one time I was holding them just like this and it grabbed onto my cheek. But uh, look at this guy's a beauty. Look at this guy, Gelber's pythons, super cool animals. All right, so what I have here is a black dragon. Its name is Zyra. And the thing when you get into monitor lizards is that you want to really kind of gain their trust. I'm trying my hardest to not restrain her whatsoever because that's when they freak out. If you can just kind of support her, let her feel okay. That doesn't mean she's not going to try to jump and run away at some point, but I'm going to do my absolute best. But the fact is, is that these are definitely an Asian water monitor, but they're a specific locality that's all black. Now, I have a theory about that, and I'm not going to say that it's absolutely true, but there are certain localities of animals that sometimes there's a mutation like melanism, like this is, essentially, and they really thrive for whatever reason. Maybe they soak up more sun, maybe they're more camouflage, whatever it is, and over time that population turns into a particular color mutation. That's probably what happened here. Now before you guys save your hate, I'm just saying that that's a theory. I'm not saying that that's what happened, but there's no doubt that this is an animal that is just like most of the other water monitors, but happened to be an all black animal. Most likely a mutation at some point that just thrived in the wild. So regardless, these guys are absolutely incredible and again they're gonna get really large and a black dragon that's six or seven feet that's one impressive animal so what I have here what's his name again Kobu Kobu thank you <laughs> <laughs> so what I have here is Kobu the coming eye monitor lizard and one of the things I really wanted to touch on is the fact that I love these independent pet shops like JTK reptiles it's just kind of neat to have an environment like this that you can go and see such incredible animals that you would typically only see maybe at a zoo. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not against the, the big box stores or something like that, but it's really the independent stores like this that Brian runs that really are what bring people into the reptile hobby and show them animals that aren't just generic. I mean, when are you going to a pet shop and see a black dragon or a coming? <laughs> oh my gosh, come here, cool dude. Oh my gosh. Oh. You know what they say in entertainment? Never work with children or animals. <laughs> and uh, I'm a child and this is an animal, so we're in a big, big problem right now. But nevertheless, this, this place is awesome. I wish I had a place like this around my corner because I'd be hanging out there every day. This is an amazing little animal right here. This is actually a satanic leaf-tailed gecko, or a Europlates satanicus. Now the Europlates, or all the leaf-tailed geckos, are from Madagascar, and the satanics are a smaller species of the Europlates, but they all have amazing climbing ability and they have amazing camouflage, and they have really pretty amazing jumping abilities as well. But uh, the Satanicus are just some of the coolest and most bizarre looking, of course. And they have those really big eyes because they are nocturnal. These guys you'll really see move around during the daytime and they just kind of stay really camouflaged. You could see if you put them on a branch and you were walking in the wilderness, you wouldn't even be able to see something like this. One of their other defense mechanisms is they'll flatten out really, really small so that basically they have no shadow. These guys are masters of camouflage. And then some species, believe it or not, have pretty big gaping mouths so that if a predator does finally find them, they'll open that mouth and scare them away. These guys do all their hunting at night and they'll definitely eat some nectar and also little bugs. Man, look at that tail. No wonder why they call them leaf tail geckos. Now I've highlighted caiman lizards quite a bit in the past, but look at this little baby! This is the cutest thing in the world! Now these guys are just amazing animals and such bizarre animals. I mean look at that big head, and I've always said, I mean they really are 
cross between a lizard and some crocodilian species or something like that. But these guys are actually really cool. And many people raise these up big and they become very placid. And you can actually just, you know, carry them around like a little puppy dog. But as a baby, they're a little bit feisty. But again, it, it's just such a bizarre animal. And these guys have extremely strong jaws. A lot of times in the wild, they'll eat a lot of snails. So they have to crush the snail shells. So uh, you don't want to get bit by one of these guys when it's bigger. But when it's this cute, oh my gosh. <laughs> this thing is killing me, man. It's such an adorable little monkey. Oh my gosh, the little baby came in lizard. All right, so I've had several run-in with pied reticulated pythons, and they usually end up with me being bitten. But this guy is actually pretty chill, and I've always loved you know, any piebald animals. As a matter of fact, what really got me into ball pythons was a piebald ball python. So when I saw the first pied retic that Bob Clark had produced, I was absolutely floored. And what's interesting about these guys, just like any piebald, which is a recessive mutation, is how variable they can be. Some of these guys can be 10% white, and some can be 90% white. But what's interesting about retics as opposed to a lot of the other pied mutations is that their head is pied as well. Now when you talk about ball pythons and a lot of other pied morphs, typically their head are normal. So it's kind of interesting with the pied retic that you have that variable as well, that you can have a half a head white or, or completely white for that matter. These guys are really cool. And again, the first ones were a little bit cantankerous and seemed to like to bite. But now that they've been outbred and more gene pool comes in, they're starting to tame out a lot. But I can tell you right now, guys, this guy's putting a pretty good squeeze on my hand. And I think if I go much further, maybe I'll get a little kiss from this guy too. Regardless, I have loved my time here at JTK Reptiles. I'm going to go ahead and put all his links in the description, so make sure to check him out and show him some love. And as always, guys, on Facebook and tweeting and Instagram my way through things. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.